Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up a parallax effect inside of Webflow. Let's get right into it. Okay, so this is what we're gonna build out today, guys. So as you can see, I have three different images here in my viewport. I have this image of these bears that's kind of in my foreground. In my middle ground, I have this mountain image. And way in the back in my background, I have these clouds. And as you can see, when I scroll, I have this parallax effect where the bare layer in the foreground moves against the back layers. So it creates like this 3D effect, which is super awesome and clean. And I want to show you guys how to do it because I love it. Okay, so let's come into Webflow. Okay, so all I have right now is I've dropped in a section, I've given it a class, and I've set the height to 100 VH just so we have a nice little canvas to work with here. Okay. Okay, now I'm just going to go grab my images. So I'm gonna bring in my bears, and then I'm gonna bring in my mountains, and then I'm gonna bring in my clouds. Okay, so I have all three images. I'm gonna give them each a class. So I'm gonna call this image clouds, this one mountains, and then I'm gonna name this one bears. Okay, so they all have classes. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to position these three images inside of our parent element in a way that will allow us to control how we layer them and in what order we layer them on top of each other. We're gonna do this through something called absolute positioning. Basically, absolute positioning is just a way we can control the layout of our elements inside our other elements. So let me just show you this, it'll be easier to show you. Okay, so let me click our main section uh, element and I'll scroll down right here to this position section on, on the right. And as a default, when you drop in an element into Webflow, you're going to be statically positioned. That's just your default. There's no real position properties there. It's just sat. It's just static. But if we want to, we can change our main section parent element, the element that is holding our three images, and we can set it to relative. Now, the second that we position our parent element or our main section relatively, then all of our children inside of that parent element our images, our three pictures, we are then able to position absolutely fixed or stickily. That's a good word. And that just gives us a greater range of control that we can that we can implement with those images. So again, set your main section to relative, and then all three of our images, we're gonna set to absolute. So we'll just come in here, we'll come to absolute. And you can see when you set something absolutely, you have different control of like where that image sits inside of the parent section, okay? That's why it's called absolute. It's just gonna sit in one absolute position inside of the relative parent element at all times. So what we wanna do is we wanna click full. So it will absolutely fill our parent section at all times and it won't move. Okay, so we'll come to fill. And then mountains, our mountain image, we'll do the same thing, we'll come absolute and we'll hit full. And then bears, we'll do the same thing position absolutely inside of our parent main section playground you can see and it's just it fills that section okay so that is positioning absolutely so now let's go to step two so step two is we just need to ensure that our three images are layered correctly on top of each other right now they are i'm going to show you how you can control if they're not if you want to put let's say the bears behind the mountain for example well, the second that we position something other than statically, we get this little box right here called the Z-index or the Z-score or whatever you want to call it. Now, what's a Z-index? A Z-index is basically just how we control what image or what element is on top of the other element. So a higher Z-score, the closer to you on the screen that element will be. The lower the Z-score or the more negative the Z-score, the further back that element will sit in your viewport. So for example, in our image here, we want the bears at the front and the clouds in the back. So as long as the bears have a higher Z-score than the mountain, and the mountain has a higher Z-score or Z-index than the clouds, then our layering will be correct. Okay, so as you can see, our layers are correctly layered right now on top of each other in the right order. But let me just show you the Z-index just so in case one of your elements isn't, you'll know how to change it. So I'll click my clouds class, my cloud image, and I'll come down here. As you can see, we're absolutely positioned still, and that lets us set this e index, Z index score. So let's just say I give it a Z index of four. Boom, it comes all the way to the front, OK? 
okay? Mountains, um, let's say I give it a z index of five. Okay, five is greater than four, so now my mountains sit in front of my clouds. Bears, well, I'm gonna have to give it something higher than a five if I want it to be in front of my mountains. So I'll give it a six and it'll come right there. Now, if I gave it a two, it disappear. It wouldn't be there because it's behind both other layers. So that's how that works. So my clouds, I'll give this a uh, zero, mountains a one, and uh, bears a two. Okay, and there we go. Now step three is we need to actually set up this parallax interaction. So the key to any good parallax interaction, a realistic looking 3D interaction is the front layer, our bears, needs to move up and across the screen at a faster pace than the two layers behind it. So the bear moves across the mountain pretty quickly while the mountain moves across the clouds but at a slower pace. That way it looks like the things closer to you are closer to you. So how do we do this? Well, it's very simple. We're gonna come here, we're gonna grab our main section, okay? We're gonna grab our main section. We're gonna come to this lightning bolt up here, our interactions, and we're gonna set up an element trigger, okay? So we're gonna hit plus, and we're gonna choose this while scrolling in view. So while we scroll, we have the parallax motion. So we'll hit while scrolling in view, We'll come down here to play scroll animation. And I'm gonna create a new scroll animation. I'm gonna call it Playground Parallax. I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough, okay. Okay, so we have all these different options that we can do as we scroll. In our case, we want to move this image from the bottom to the top as we scroll, giving it that effect. So we're gonna hit move. I'm just gonna change my target. So you can just double click over this, hit change target, and then just come here to bears. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. So just double click, change target, bears. Okay, so we're just gonna, as we scroll, our bear class or our bear image is going to be the one thing moving. That's all I'm saying there. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this top option here, this first 0%, the beginning of our scroll animation. I'm gonna scroll down to right here. And all I wanna do is I wanna start our bear image 100 pixels down, okay? So when our animation begins, our bear image will be 100 pixels lower than it normally is. And by the end of the scroll, as, we, as our section scrolls 100% out of view, I wanna bring my bear back to its rightful position right there at zero pixels. Okay, so that's our bear. Now, we also want the mountains to move slightly against the clouds. So we can do the exact same thing. We're just not gonna move it as far as we just did for the bear. So as you can see, our bear is moving from 100 pixels down to zero pixels down at the end. So it's moving 100 pixels in total. Our mountains, we don't wanna move as fast or as far in this case, so that it's not moving as quickly as the bear is in the foreground. So maybe we'll move it 50 pixels or 40. We'll play with it and see how it looks. So I'm just gonna come right up here to the beginning of our animation, 0%. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hit move. This time, I don't wanna uh, affect my bear class, I wanna affect my mountains, so I'm just gonna double click, change target, change it to mountains. I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here. Change target to mountains. Our mountains, I'm gonna have them start, let's try, let's try 50, 50 pixels down. And by the end, same thing as the bear. I just want it right in the right position. Okay. Now I'll hit save. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to come in here to our animation boundaries. And we just need to change this to start our animation when our element is fully visible. The reason we do this is because our main section, the section that we're triggering this animation off of, is fully visible. It's, it's right at the beginning of our load. So we need to start this animation immediately. We don't need an offset. So we change it there. Make sure our playground parallax is set. And then we should be good. So we'll hit publish. And we'll see how it turned out. So we'll come in here, we'll hit refresh. All right, so let's see what happened. So as I scroll, you can see our bear moves against our mountain pretty nicely. 
but our mountain is also moving against our cloud, so it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna bump up our foreground just a little bit, just to tweak it. So I'm gonna come back in here to my bear. I'm sorry, I'm gonna come back in here to my uh, interaction. And I'm just gonna tweak this slightly. So my bear, I just gonna, I'm gonna wanna start it maybe 120 pixels down, just so it moves a little bit more. It looks like it's moving a little faster. We'll publish. And we'll see how that turned out. Okay, there we go. I'm liking that now. So it's moving up a little faster now. And you can really see that beautiful parallax. Isn't that nice, guys? Don't you love that? So that's it, guys. We just set up a parallax interaction inside of Webflow. It took us, what, 10 minutes? Super easy, super quick. Remember, all you have to do is position your elements, set the Z index, and then create your parallax interaction. That's it. If you guys like this video, please go down, smash that like button. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, go down in the comments. I'll get back to you as fast as I can. If you're enjoying this content and want to see more like it, consider subscribing. I'd also appreciate that. But thank you so much for being here, guys. Good luck building your websites. Good luck building your side projects. And I will see you next week. Peace.